So this over here is something that Team Group calls the Siren Duo 360mm AIO. When I saw this, first of all, I was very excited because I've never seen anything like that before. There's an SSD cooler built into the AIO and I had a lot of questions like, is this gonna heat up the SSD or is the SSD heat gonna heat up the CPU? Does it even work? And uh, when we tested this, I found some things that you really need to know when using this one because in certain motherboards it's not gonna work but also there's some good news like who's the sponsor of this video looking for a cheap way to license your windows check out who keys through the links in the video description make sure to use the code tn20 to get a 30 percent off paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done this license is for windows 10 but you can upgrade it to windows 11 for free they also offer microsoft office 19 license use the same code tn20 to get a 30 percent off check out whokeys.com in the video description below let's rewind time a little bit and then get it set up and then see what are some of the complications and things that come up when you're setting this up and let's test this thing. Okay, so there is white and black variants, I can see. This one is white, I believe. Two years warranty, user guide. Whoa, we have three RGB fans, white RGB fans, and they've got some interesting design going on over here. Because as you can see, the fans have, um, have been like glued together or molded together. So the fan blades, they're not free. Um, like on the top here, you can see a single circle around and then it kind of pushes it around, I guess, so that the fan blade ends wouldn't flip around. I know MSI does this with uh, some of the GPUs. Some of the GPUs do them. I know Asus does that as well with, with GPUs, but I've never quite seen that on normal fans like that. Okay. So this is the cooler for the CPU and SSD. Now this block here, the SSD block is really, really heavy. It's heavier than the CPU block. This is all just solid metal. I don't know what is going on in there, but that is seriously, seriously heavy. And interestingly, looks like the pump is in the radiator, as you can see here, not on the actual CPU block. I know Be Quiet has done some of those coolers before, and I think even MSI. Also, the NVMe part of the, you know, block, it comes with this interesting light on the top. So you can put it either on top here or somewhere else. It's got a 5 volt RGB header. You can put it on the case or somewhere that has magnets around, but I guess it does fit on top of this here. So let's figure out a way how to mount it, and then let's turn it on and see if it works. Okay, here I've got the thermal right uh, contact frame on the CPU. This is the 13900K, and I'm gonna use the included thermal paste that came with the CPU to see if that is any good. It's very liquidy, which uh, sometimes is good news. And I'm gonna use a spatula to spread it out. It's very, very runny thermal paste. And looks like you have about two applications for the thermal paste. I could do another one. Uh, at least, if not more. And now uh, gently, let's let's put the block on, but make sure you pull this one off. Once you've got it pressed on, I'm gonna do a little wiggle, but I wanna make sure that I'm not lifting it anymore. Okay, here's one of the first interesting things. This SSD block is gonna be screwed into the SSD holder, right? So I've got the SSD plugged in here, but the SSD screw hole is on this side, but the socket is on that side. The socket's on the left, but I know some other boards have sockets on the right here as well. So you plug it in on the, on the right side, which means that then you will have to flip this around, which is actually what the instructions show that this kind of T4, T4 siren logo will be on that side and the tubes come out from this side and then the tubes would be facing the RAM on the other side. But right now, I'm gonna, be have, to, I'm gonna have to put it this way. Otherwise, I'm gonna be twisting the tubes a little bit. But the thing is, now the actual face of the AIO is wrong way around and I don't think there's a way to change that. By the way, I'm gonna leave the SSD cooler off right now because we're gonna do the just cooler test before and then see once we add the SSD cooler, is anything gonna change and how does that affect performance? 
Also, the fan cables of the AIO do not daisy chain together, but the cooler comes with a splitter cable, so one to three, like that. So you can actually plug in the CPU fan and then you will have three plugs for your fans. There is an RGB cable that comes for the AIO block here, but that is black. Interesting, all the rest of the things are white, like, but the extension cable for the fans is black and the RGB header for the CPU block is black as well. Okay, we're ready to fire it on. So right now I'm doing the PC Mark 10 test and this is for the OS SSD that I have set up over there. This is the Samsung 980 Pro one terabyte drive, okay? The drive reminding life is 100%, it's a good drive. And then the drive temperature is 38% right now. Okay, I can feel that the heatsink is getting quite warm here now for the SSD. Look at that, 42, 55% used here. So you can see how it's been used and how the temperatures work there. Okay, looks like we have completed the test now. And the drive temperature maximum was 46 degrees. And in fact, it's still 46 degrees because it kind of heated up and takes a bit of time to come down because the heating is only small. So it's not like cooling down as much. Okay, 200 watts so that we're not gonna be, you know, pushing so much through the thermal throttling so we can see before and after kind of thermal results. 200 watts, I'm gonna start that. I'm gonna run that, zero that. Okay, I'm also doing a crystal disk mark here. Uh, I've put this to nine times in 64 uh, gigs um, and I'm looking at the drive temperature now. The drive temperature is 55 C now. The During the PC benchmark test, it was about 48 maximum there and ended up 48. But now we'll see if we're gonna get the drive heated up a bit more. Ooh, the heating is seriously warm now. Ooh, very hot to the touch. Okay, the drive is quite hot. Okay, so the test is just completed nine times this, right? Oh, we put it default, not NVMe, so we would have got the write speed a little bit higher. So never mind the write speed, it's just putting the load on the drive. We're not testing the drive, we just want to see the temperature. And it's 64 degrees. Woo! That is very, very hot heatsink over there. So here's what we do now. I'm going to turn the PC off, and then we can actually install this heatsink now to the SSD. But the way you do it is a little bit uh, different and interesting. First of all, we're gonna have to take the heatsink off the included heatsink. Ow, it's warm. Ow, it's very hot. Okay, this is very, very hot heatsink right now. I'm gonna put that on the side. Oh, and the Samsung drive, the drive isn't that hot actually, which is interesting, which means that the drive gets the heat out. So now I'm gonna have to take the drive off from there and I will have to remove this standoff as well. So basically, you're gonna take this and the SSD is gonna go inside. Okay, just like that. It kind of slots and holds onto those little nooks over there. First, you put the thermal pad on top of the SSD. And then now this will go on top of it. First of all, we're gonna take this off there as well then there's these tiny little screws on the side of it that we want to screw in okay so now the ssd is on the back or on the bottom of this block the thermal pad is on the top there's nothing on the bottom but there's a little bit of an air on the bottom i'd say that if you've got nand chips also on the bottom of the sm.2 ssd it might not even fit maybe it's gonna fit still actually underneath but mine is plugged in now what i'll have to do is i'll have to plug the ssd in i'm gonna have to mount this this way an interesting look it's not actually gonna fit i can't fit it in there because this over here is in the way Okay, I have encountered a big problem, which you'll have to know before getting this one. If your top M.2 slot is on the left side in terms of the socket, then you're just not gonna be able to plug it in. 
because it's either going to be in the way of the back you're going to have to have the top slot on the right side which fortunately i can do because i do have this secondary slot here and i'll show you what i mean now i've i've twisted those tubes a little bit and if my tubes were on the right side next to the ram and that's what it's meant to be okay your tubes are supposed to go next to the ram and then you're going to be plugging it in there as you can see boom it's plugged in there and then you can screw it in with a special screwdriver that comes in the box because you'll have to put it through that and then your ssd is kind of glued in and mounted that one on the top and have a clean down wire because it comes down from this over there you can have it nicely on the top and then plug in your rgb there but the thing is this top little light has got such a short RGB cable, it will only fit in there or you're gonna to have to use extension somehow if you use it on the top of that. Now, we've got it plugged in. I'm gonna put the CPU burner on, okay? So that takes that to 200 watts, probably now there. Yep, 200 watts, CPU is 62 degrees, something like that. Let's have a look at the SSD now here, okay? First of all, 28 degrees that's quite low okay so interestingly it's been running for a few minutes three minutes and our drive temperature is still 28 degrees which means that it is cooling down the drive and it's not actually heating up the drive if we're looking at the cpu that's still 66 degrees so now what we're going to be doing is loading the drive and let's see if we can heat up the drive or the cpu with this heatsink on Okay, let's wait when our core temperature reaches uh, 66 degrees because that's what it was average before 65 there we go a bit more a bit more 66 there we go so now it goes 65 66 something like that degrees our ssd is two terabyte and one terabyte one as you can see the two terabyte one without the heat sink right now just standing there on idle is 43 degrees and then the one with the heatsink is 30 degrees but now i'm gonna whack this crystal disc mark on as well okay pc is a bit slow because all the threads are 100 percent used so cpu is 100 percent and the drive is 100 percent so let's see if we're gonna heat up the cpu or the drive now so our ssd is now 35 degrees so we have reached five degrees higher let's see if the cpu is higher CPU is still 66 on average, hasn't changed there much. So the interesting thing how this flow works is that the hot liquid goes from the CPU block to the radiator, because I can feel this is warm here on the tube, then goes all the way through the radiator and then out from the other one, cold. So the cold goes actually first to the SSD, right? and then goes through the SSD heatsink and then out into the CPU block and then gets warmed up and then back into the radiator. I guess that would be worse if it would come from the hot temperature would come there straight to the SSD, then we might have the SSD warm up a little bit. But looking at the drive temperature is 37 degrees now. It's a little bit higher than before. CPU is still 66. So look, our SSD is still only 37 degrees. Let's have a look when it stops now. I'm just gonna stop it myself. I'm gonna go to NVMe test and then press go again to see if we can load the SSD even more to get it even higher, maybe 40 degrees, 40, something like that, to push a little bit of heat back into the CPU and to see if it can keep up or if we ever gonna heat up the CPU. Okay, I've done the test now. Again, this has been 15 minutes and looks like 38 degrees is about as hot as it's gonna get now it's dropped back to 36 and our cpu is still look it dropped down to 65 66 so it looks like doesn't matter how much we hammer the drive it's not gonna heat up the cpu and the thing actually works i'm gonna stop this because it's a little bit loud now the drive is still much even on the load 38 
is four degrees lower than a drive that's idle doing nothing without the heatsink, which is just very, very good. Now, I've got a Gen 4 drive and this is one of the like better Gen 4 drives, but when it gets to Gen 5, the differences might be even more. When Gen 5 drives pull a little bit more voltage, a little bit more power hungry, run a little bit hotter, you might need them cooling down, but it's not that big of a deal as you might think. 64 degrees that my drive was there is still completely fine um, that it was before, but if you do want to have your drive run the coolest you know, possible way, then this is a very interesting option actually, and I like the design. Now, this is not perfect because obviously you're gonna have to, the biggest thing you have to remember with this product is that you're gonna have to have a motherboard that supports the socket on the right side okay you can't have it if your motherboard socket is on the left side like i have here on the pro art board then it will work and that's cool the other downside that i can find about this is the cable length for this heating rgb because it is so 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 short if you're going to put it on the top there you're not going to reach it in the top corner neither in the bottom corner where your usual rgb headers are on so you're gonna have to use some kind of an extension cable but this could have been easily sorted if that cable here would have been like at least double if not triple the length so what's a little bit longer we can put it on the bottom there and then push the excess underneath or put it on the top corner and then push the excess underneath somewhere over there but right now it's a problem we're gonna have to extend it which means that you're gonna have an extension somewhere in the middle of your heat sink so somewhere between your ram sticks which is not as nice to see as this here but the overall big thing is does it work yeah it does work it does make your ssd cooler second of all do you need it Probably not. Is it cool? Yeah, it's pretty cool, but it's easily controllable on like my armory crate. It works here right now. It's quite easy to uh, get it working. It works. It's nice. If you want to check it out, I'm going to leave it in the description below if you want to pick it up. But if you do want to build yourself the best bank for what create a PC, then check out the build guides a little bit further down in the description below. There's four videos there and pick the one that's closest to your budget and then configure your needs inside the video. I'll explain everything. Upgrades, downgrades there. Go check them out. It's just the best one for creators if you want to save money and get best performance possible for your budget thanks guys for watching bye bye